In part A of the question, we must convert the angular speed of the propeller into the units of radians per second. If we look at the given information, we can see that the angular speed is given to us in units of revolutions per minute, so it becomes our task to change that into radians per second. Let's go ahead and write down 25 revolutions per minute. When you write this down, it's a good idea to write it as 25 revolutions over one minute. And then what we're going to do is convert the minutes into seconds. That's relatively easy. We all know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So we're going to multiply by this sort of conversion factor here. And you'll notice the way in which we set it up is so that the minutes in the denominator here will cancel out with the minutes in the numerator here. So those are going to cancel out. And then at this stage, we would have revolutions per second. But again, in part A, we don't want revolutions per second. We want radians per second. So we're going to multiply by another conversion factor. Now, hopefully, we have all learned in this chapter that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. That's a very important conversion factor that you would use throughout this chapter in various circumstances. And again, notice the way in which we have set it up. You can see the revolutions here in the numerator will cancel out with the revolutions here in the denominator. And then if you study the units that are left standing, you have radians in the numerator and seconds in the denominator. Indeed, you would have radians per second. So now what you want to do is pick up your calculator and you basically want to multiply 25 over 1 by 1 over 60 by 2 pi over 1. So let's go ahead and do that on our calculators. And when we do so, we're going to get about 2.62. And again, as highlighted in yellow, the units we have are radians per second. So that becomes the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's take a look at part B, which says find the moment of inertia of the propeller about the axis of rotation. So in this chapter, we have learned how to determine the moment of inertia of various types of objects, cylinders, rods, etc. But we certainly haven't learned how to calculate the moment of inertia of a propeller. So what we're going to do is offer a simplified version of the propeller. Let's take a look at that now. So we have gone ahead and have redrawn the propeller. Kind of looks like a piece symbol. And what we'll do is treat the individual blades of the propeller as long thin rods. So this is going to represent a long thin rod, so is this, and so is this. And furthermore, in addition to treating them as long thin rods, we're going to allow the rotation axis of each rod to be located through each rod's end. Here is a picture from the textbook that shows us what we're talking about. So we do have a long thin rod, and in this particular question, if you look very carefully, the rods are rotating about an axis at the end of the rod. You can compare that to a rod that would be rotating about an axis through its center, like this. And that would actually have a different moment of inertia expression. So that's not what we're looking at. That was just for comparison. Our rods, again, are rotating through an axis that is perpendicular through the end of the rod. And we can see that in that particular case, each long thin rod has a moment of inertia equal to one third times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod. Now we have three identical rods that each have the same mass and the same length. So perhaps what we can say is that the total moment of inertia is going to equal three multiplied by this expression for the moment of inertia of one of the rods. So again, because the rods are identical and because there are three of them, we can go ahead and multiply the moment of inertia expression by three. Now, of course, three times one third is just one, so we're left with one ml squared or just ml squared. So now all we have to do to get the total moment of inertia of this propeller is to multiply the mass of the rod by the length of the rod squared. We can scroll back up here and we can see that the mass is given as 420 kilograms and then the length of each rod is 35 meters. So we're going to go ahead and plug that information in. And then when we simplify this on our calculators, we're going to get 514,500. 
And then studying the units carefully here, we have kilograms being multiplied by meters squared. Note that the meters have been squared. So this gives us a unit of kilograms times meters squared. That would be the total moment of inertia of the propeller. And so we can go and answer part C, which wants the total kinetic energy of the propeller. Now for a rotating object, simply an object that is spinning around its axis, we perhaps have learned that the kinetic energy for that rotating object, we call this the rotational kinetic energy, is equal to one half times the moment of inertia times the angular speed squared. And of course, in this question, we've already found the moment of inertia in part B and the angular speed in part A. So we simply have to plug these values in. So again, the moment of inertia is what we found in part B. And then the angular speed is what we found in part A. And the standard unit is radians per second, which we did acquire. It was equal to 2.62 radians per second. And then don't forget to square those radians per second. So we'll punch this into our calculators, and then we're going to get the correct answer for the kinetic energy of this spinning propeller. And it turns out to be a rather large number. Let's see here. Here's the digits, 1763164 approximately. So maybe we'll throw a comma in there and a comma in there. So it's about 1.8 million joules of rotational kinetic energy. And that is the answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to make a little donation to the channel, that would be much appreciated. My Venmo ID is below, but if not, no problem. And thanks again for watching.